it's time to make enamel pins even easier to make. Hi, it's Sarah and welcome to my studio. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video on how I create my 3D printed enamel pins and I got a lot of positive feedback from it. You guys seemed really excited to try this technique, like it was something you were thinking about but never really knew how to do or it was something completely new that you had never seen before. In fact, a major channel in the 3D printed space actually commented on my video how they thought it was really neat and they were wanting to do sort of something similar with the new UV printer that's coming out to market, which by the way, I am on the Kickstarter. I just wasn't lucky enough to get one before to show all of you guys, but there will be videos involving Yuffie Make Snoop UV printer in the near future, I promise you. I'm sure all of you guys are probably familiar with the channel Uncle Jesse, but he actually left a comment on how he liked the video and had subscribed to my channel. And my first thought was, oh my God, a big channel noticed me, a big channel noticed me. Be cool, be cool, you know, type a nice comment, you know, be total pro oh, about this, you know, yeah, thanks for liking it. Yeah, I plan to get, I've got the printer coming too. By the way, you have an awesome channel, you know, totally don't come off as a fangirl, you know. Oh, I probably should edit this portion of the video out, shouldn't I? But another subscriber of my channel actually left a comment asking, hey, this is, you know, a really cool video, but how come you aren't using Maker Labs Image to Keychain to make your pens, especially since you can adjust the height of the colors? And I read that and went, <coughs> you can do that? I never played around with that feature. I can control the color heights and make multiple layers in Image Keychain, like bypass the CAD feature altogether. <coughs> Turns out you can actually adjust the colors in image keychain and control the height of the colors. And as a result, you can actually take these pin designs, completely bypass Adobe Illustrator, making the little black and white image and bypass CAD software entirely to create these pins just using this free software online. And I'm gonna show you guys how today. So let me show you how you create this enamel pin in image to keychain without having to do any CAD software. So this is even easier for some of you guys who don't wanna learn that. Although I do recommend learning it because it's a cool tool to use. So I'm over here in Image to Keychain, which is Maker World's tool that creates a vector and then a 3D file from an image. And I really have to give them credit. They did a great job in designing this. So what you wanna do is you start from Create From Blank and it will have you browse and find an image. And I am going to use my cinnamon roll drawing. I talked about this last video that I was gonna do the cinnamon roll and ended up doing the taco. This run around, we're gonna give the cinnamon roll some love. So I'm gonna bring cinnamon roll in and he looks pretty good. I've gotten him what I did over in Procreate and I didn't record it, but basically I just took out all of my texturing and my highlights and I moved my text a little bit so that it was actually on the roll. Hopefully it will be able to 3D print and it'll still be big enough to read. So I'm gonna click confirm and it's gonna process the image. And depending on the complexity of the image and how active the server is, this may take a couple of minutes and you'll get a preview of it. And it looks like it came out pretty good. So I'm click confirm and then it's gonna identify colors. And that's good, it only saw three, which is kind of what I want. I'm gonna click confirm. It's all set here. Now I'm gonna take a moment and I am going to go over and I'm going to select my image and I'm just gonna go ahead and resize it. It always defaults to 100 in width. I usually make my pens more around 40. Sometimes I adjust them from there, but I go ahead and do that step. And then I'm gonna do a couple other things. One, I want to add the gold color that I'm gonna use for the background line. So I'm gonna go over to filament color and I'm gonna add one. And I'm just gonna pick sort of an orangey yellow color here. You can go in and kind of adjust it a little bit if you want to try and get it looking more gold, but it's really just a matter of having an additional color on your screen. It could be lime green. So I've got that extra color added. Then I'm gonna go over to plate thickness. And for plate thickness, that's kind of the color on the back. And I want the back color to be 0.5 millimeters thick. I'm also gonna set the back of the color to four, which is that golden shade. And then we're gonna go back over here. I'm gonna use the select same color blocks icon, which is my rainbow pointer over here. When I do that, it's gonna select the entire color. And what I can do is I can actually control the thickness of the colors this way. So for instance, I know I've got a back of 0.5 and I want each of my colors to be 1.5 thick. So what I can do is I know that 1.5 minus 0.5 is one. So I will just set my brown to one and I will set my cream to one. Now, I usually make my border 
two millimeters thick. And I want this to be a different color. I want this to be color number four so that it's a border in gold. And that border thickness is going to be two millimeters thick. So 1.5. And then I actually I'm gonna make my black, now that I think about it, I'm gonna make my black 1.25, just so that it's up a little bit. And then if I were to go over here to my 3D simulation, you can see that the print has some thickness to it now. And you've got that border where it's two millimeters thick, you've got the text a little bit thicker, and then you've got the color. And that should give you the pin and the thickness that you need it to be. So I'm gonna go back over to my drawing and I'm gonna take a moment to name it, otherwise everything turns into keychain draft. So cinnamon roll pin, there we go. And then I'll go over to download. I will select 0.2 millimeter for the nozzle and then under download, you're gonna to wanna to download the 3MF file because that's gonna take your colors over. If you choose the STL, you're gonna lose all of your colors. So you're gonna to wanna to click download 3MF and then from there, you can open it over in Bamboo Studio. So I'm over here in Bamboo Studio and I've got my cinnamon roll pin opened up. So I always put my nozzle on 0.2 and then I'm going to use my enamel pen settings, which is using a 0.12 millimeter layer height. I also have the quality set so that it irons all of the top surfaces. And I usually turn off my prime tower. Don't know why that's enabled, that's something I need to fix. And I think that's pretty much the only other setting that I change. The pins are so thin that usually infill density doesn't make much of a difference. And it's got all of my colors in here. And then I will typically clone and make a few copies. I will usually do more than one to a plate to be more efficient, especially given the fact that I know that there's going to be color filament changes. I also adjust my flushing volumes. I will typically put in, if I'm not going to go in and figure out the exact amount, I'll put in usually about 0.6 and then I will slice my plate and then I'll always zoom in to make sure everything looks okay. And it looks like it sort of gets my text, but it looks like it might be a little on the small side. So what I'll do is I will back up one step and it did come in as 40 millimeters. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Let me slice the plate to make sure that that works a little better. Yeah, that's a little better. That's a little more defined. Okay, so then I can clone and make eight copies. There we go. Do that one more time. Slice my plate. And then if I scroll on through, you can see... Oh, I know what I forgot to do. I always turn off uniform scale. Let me set these back to two. There we go. Always got to make sure if you've got a specific thickness that you always double check that. There we go. So these are all now set and ready to be printed. So I'll send these to the printer. And then after that, we'll get the coat of resin on and I will show you guys the final results. It looks like the lettering still ended up being too small for my pin. So I went back and redesigned it, making the letters much bigger and taking up a larger portion of the pin. This turned out much better. I like how this looks. It's easier to read and it still has that cute cinnamon roll effect. Now that's left is to just add the coat of resin. I'm doing this out in my living room space because I'm babysitting some strawberry jam on the stove. That's one of those you want to be nearby, but not necessarily right on top of it. It gets pretty hot. But anyway, I pour a layer of hard UV resin over the top, tap it a little bit, and then of course eliminate the bubbles using a lighter. After that, I let the UV resin cure. Usually I do two cycles of 120 seconds under my UV light. And once that's completed, all we need to do is add a pin back. And again, my favorite thing to use is Gorilla Glue Super Glue. But as you can see, the pins turned out really nice. Same effect as last time, only much easier to do. And there you have it, a cute little cinnamon roll pen, whole lot easier to do, no CAD software required, just as long as you have a really nice clean image design, you can literally go from a transparent image to a 3D printed file with just a couple of clicks and a little bit of know-how. Again, I wanna thank Shane who commented on this video and pointed this feature out to me. I did not know it existed and it definitely simplifies the process quite a bit. I still do recommend taking the time to learn CAD software or modeling software like Nomad Sculpt if you're wanting to get into 3D design and 3D printing because it's really important that you design your own stuff. I mean, let's be honest, especially with recent changes on Etsy, you gotta expand a little bit and make your own mark in the space. I mean, there's more to 3D printing than just articulated dragons. 
And I plan to keep pushing the 3D printing creative art boundary here on the channel. I just celebrated 5,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you guys enough. I'm actually on track by the end of this month to effectively double the amount of subscribers that I had at the end of 2024. So all of the growth that I did in 2024, I was actually able to do in the first half here of 2025. And I am so grateful to to all of you guys who have commented on my videos. It's really means so much to me to know that, you know, you guys appreciate what I do and that I'm not just, you know, shouting into the void. I mean, the void's shouting back and hopefully it doesn't get a little on the Eldritch side, but you know, that's, that's YouTube in general. You know, it's a little Eldritch. It's a Lovecraft joke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope this is helpful for those of you who are trying to kind of create 3D printed pens but don't necessarily want to get into CAD software right now. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!